In this video, we will look at a trend line breakout trading strategy. We will first look at a simple but effective trend following strategy, then we will build a machine learning strategy to filter out false breakouts. This video will make use of the trend line functions I showed in this video. If you want to see the code for how these trend lines are drawn, you can check that video out. The trend lines function finds the line that has the minimum distance to the input prices while also being above or below every price. In this video, we're looking at trend line breakouts, but by design, the price will never be above or below these trend lines. To allow the price to break out, we do not include the current candle when we fit the trend lines. In other words, these trend lines are lagged by one candle. We extend these lines forward to the current candle. This way, we can detect trend line breakouts. Let's start with the simple trend following strategy. We have this function which takes a closing price array and a look back parameter. We create output arrays for the support trend line, the resistance trend line, and the signal. We loop through each price in the array. We get a recent window of prices, but we do not include the current price. This window is lagged by one candle. We use the function fit trend line single on the window of prices. This function was shown in the trend line video. It returns two sets of coefficients, a slope and intercept for both the support and resistance trend line. We use these slopes and intercepts to find the value of the trend lines for the current candle. We save the current values of the trend lines in these output arrays. Let's look at these two outputs on a plot along with the price. The light blue line is the hourly closing price of Bitcoin. The red and green lines are the current value of the support and resistance trend lines respectively. By refitting the trend lines on each candle, we get these weird looking bands. Occasionally, the price will be above or below these bands. A simple trend following rule is once the closing price is above the green band, we take a long position. We hold this long position until the price closes below the red band. Then we reverse to a short position. The short position is held until the price again closes above the green band. This trading rule always has a position in the market. In code, if the price is above the current resistance value, then we set the signal to 1 for long. If it's below the current support value, then we set the signal to negative 1 for short. And otherwise, we copy the signal from the previous candle. To test, we load in hourly Bitcoin data from a CSV. We call the trendline breakout function with the closing price and a look back. I use 72, which is arbitrary. We save the returned arrays into our data frame. This is for plotting the bands we saw earlier. Then we get the next candles log return. We can get the trading rules returns by multiplying this by the strategy signal. Then we compute the profit factor and plot the cumulative log return. It's decent, it has a profit factor of 1.035, but let's see how this performs across a wider range of parameters. Here are the profit factors across a wide range of lookbacks. There is a large spike in performance from 32 to 42, but my guess is that is just random luck. Beware of spikes in performance like this and the parameters of trading strategies. It is likely it won't carry forward to the future. But generally, the strategy has okay performance across most values. Not bad for having a position 100% of the time. I'm showing this simple strategy to show that the trendline breakout generally works, at least on Bitcoin. Now we'll move on to using a meta-labeling machine learning approach to filter false breakouts and hopefully get better results. But to do that, we need to define a more specific type of trade. Here is a visualization of one of the breakout trades that we will consider. I'll continue using a 72 hour trend line and I'll focus on resistance or upper trend line breakouts for the rest of the video to keep things simple. The trade entry happens when the price closes above the trend line. I marked the candle that breaks out of the trend line in blue. For an exit, I decided to use a 3 average true range or ATR, stop loss, and take profit, centered around the entry price. I use a maximum hold period of 12 candles, so if neither the stop loss or take profit is hit within 12 candles, we exit the position. The decision to use a 3 ATR stop loss and take profit and the 12 hour hold period is mostly arbitrary, but we need definitive exit rules as we will use the outcome of these trades to build a label for our machine learning model. Our goal is to find features or indicators that are predictive of when this trade setup works and does not work. Then train a model with these indicators so we can make a prediction at the time of breakout to decide whether or not to take the trade. Let's look at the code for finding these trade setups and creating the dataset we will use later to train the machine learning model. 
This function finds the trade setups and records them in a data set. It takes open high low close data, a look back for the trend line, a maximum holding period, stop loss, and take profit multipliers to be used with an ATR, and a look back for the ATR. I set the ATR look back to a week or 168 since we're using hourly data here. We get the log closing price as a numpy array. Then we compute the average true range using log prices and convert it to a numpy array. Here I compute the normalized volume, that is volume divided by its median, and the ADX. We'll use these as features, but I'll talk about features later on. We create a pandas data frame to store the trade data and a count to keep track of the trades added. We have these four variables for keeping track of the current trade. Prices for the stop loss and take profit, and HPI is the index of the maximum holding period for the current trade. We loop through each candle in the data. We get the recent window of prices, not including the current price, then fit the trend lines. We're again only considering the resistance breakout in this video, so I just project the upper trend line to the current bar. If we're not already in a trade and the close is above the resistance line, then we prepare an entry. We'd set the take profit and stop loss prices from the close plus and minus the average true range multiplied by their respective multipliers. We set HPI as the current index plus the holding period limit, and we set in trade to true. We add several pieces of data to the trade data frame on the current row the index and price of the entry, the current average true range, take profit and stop loss prices, the hold period and slope intercept of the resistance trend line. Here onwards, we also add some features for the machine learning we'll do later. I'm going to skip over these for now, we'll come back to them later. Here we're still inside the loop through all the candles, and this block manages the current trade. If we are, we check if it is time to exit. Comparing the close to the set take profit and stop loss, as well as checking the current loop index against the current holding period limit. If it is time to exit, we record the index and price of the exit, set in trade to false, and increment the trade count. After the loop is complete, we can compute the trade return as the exit price minus the entry price. We used logarithmic prices, so this return is roughly equivalent to a percentage. Later, when we're training a model, we'll need a label to train with. I chose a binary classification label. We label 1 if the trade had a positive return, and 0 if it was negative. We return this label as data y. We also pack the features in a separate data frame called data x. The information in data X and Y are in the trades data frame, but I just added them to separate data frames for convenience. Here's the performance of the trendline breakout with the 3 ATR stop loss and take profit for hourly Bitcoin data from 2018 to the end of 2022. It is not good. The win rate is right at 50%, the profit factor is low at 1.02, the average trade is only about 0.05%. These results do not include slippage or fees, which would easily ruin these barely positive results. But if we can build a model to predict when the strategy's trades work and do not work, we could potentially filter out some of the bad trades, turning this relatively bad strategy into a decent one. Let's consider some features to look at so a model can decide if one of these trend line breaks is worth trading. The common trait between each of these setups is the 72 hour resistance trend line breakout. We want features that can differentiate one setup from another. For a meta labeling model like this, learning a specific type of trade, I like to look at many of the trades and observe where they differ. I know that sounds obvious, but really, you can learn a lot just by looking. An obvious feature is the trend line slope. Sometimes the trend line break happens in a downtrend, and sometimes it happens in an uptrend. It's a good idea to dedicate a portion of the data as in sample to assess features. Here I'll use the trades from 2018 and 2019. Here's a scatter plot with the resistance slope on the x-axis and the trade return on the y-axis. There isn't much of a relationship, but on average the trade returns are positive when the slope is positive and vice versa. There is a small positive Spearman correlation of 0.1. Perhaps this feature will be more useful in the presence of other features. It's common for traders to look at the volume when a breakout happens. Sometimes the volume is high when the trend line is broken, and sometimes it's low. Here's a scatter plot of the volume normalized by a rolling median and the trade returns. The relationship here isn't very strong, but it does have a small positive correlation. When the normalized volume is less than 1, that is the volume is less than the rolling median on the breakout, the average return is negative. We can look at how close the price is to the trend line. Sometimes the prices hug the trend line closely and sometimes they are further away. This distance is minimized when the trend line is fit in the first place. Here is the average distance from a trend line versus the trade return. 
it has a small negative correlation. When the prices hug the trend lines more, trades tend to do better. Back to the code, this is the same trend line break dataset function we were looking at earlier. When we're getting an entry, we compute the slope indicator as the raw resistance slope divided by the average true range. The next indicator is the resistance error. We compute the value of the resistance line for each value in the window and subtract the prices from it. We sum the error and average it by the look back window. Then divide this by the average true range to normalize it to volatility. This will measure how close the prices are on average to the resistance line. Similar to the resistance error, another feature I found effective was the maximum distance from the resistance line. This feature actually turns out to be the most informative. If there is a price in the window that we trained the trend line on that is very far away from it, then trades do not work very well. The next feature is the volume of the candle that breaks the trend line. And the final feature is the ADX. I imagine most of you are familiar with this indicator. There's plenty of articles online about it if you're not. I typically include this indicator for meta labeling models. It usually does pretty well. It measures the strength of the trend. I use the same look back for the ADX as the trend line fit. So 72 in this case. These five features aren't necessarily the best ones or the only ones, but they are relevant to the trade setup and they have a fairly low correlation with each other, the one exception being between the maximum distance from the trend line and the trend line error. For a model, I'm going to use a random forest, which is a bagging or bootstrap aggregation of decision trees. Decision trees are good at learning hierarchical relationships. They divide the dataset into groups based on thresholds in the features. So in this decision tree, we see that the first threshold is checking if the max dist feature is below 4.788. Decision trees are rather susceptible to noise, and financial data is among the noisiest data available. Noise could essentially push one of the features over the threshold without really being meaningful. This is where the bootstrap aggregation comes into play. Bootstrap aggregation is a whole topic, but in short, the random forest trains many decision trees. Each tree is trained on a random set of data. A bootstrap means it picks random samples from the dataset with replacement. Each decision tree will learn an amount of noise that's present in the data, but when we train many decision trees in a random forest, the noise has a tendency to cancel out. Let's move on to the walk forward code and see how a random forest works with the features we selected. We load in hourly Bitcoin data from a CSV, call the function trendline breakout dataset to get the trade setups, then we call this function walk forward model. Walk forward model takes the closing price array, it also takes the trades data x and data y that are all returned from the dataset function, and it takes the train size and step size, which is the number of candles to train the model on and the number of candles between each training. Here I use two years for training and one year for the step size, so it's trained once a year. Let's go over the walk forward model function. We create two output signals. This one will be a binary signal. These will have the trades that the model selects. This other one will be the predicted probability of a profitable trade from the classifier. This variable next train is the index that we will train the model at next. We initialize it as the train size. We have some variables to keep track of the current trade. This is all very similar to what we saw in the dataset function. We loop through each candle in the dataset. We first check if it is time to train. If it is, we find the indices of the trades data frame that happened within the last two years, or whatever you specified the train size to be. We check that the exit index is less than the current index. This way we don't cheat by leaking future information into the train set. We get the features and labels for the training indices. We create a random forest. I set max depth to three to control how deep the trees go. Ideally, you should do a walk forward cross validation to set max depth but I'm trying to keep this video from being too long, and in my experience, a cross-validation will almost always yield two or three as the best max depth. There's some randomness due to the bootstrap of the random forest. I set random state so the results will be the same across different runs, but if you change the random state, your results will vary. A higher number of estimators will decrease the variation between different random seeds. I typically use 1000. More estimators should not hurt the performance, but of course they will increase the time to train the model. We call the model's fit function on the train data and increase the next train variable by the step size. Next, we manage the trade exit and signal output if we're currently in a trade. We check the closing price against the take profit and stop loss, as well as the time limit. If the trade is time to exit, we set signals to zero and in trade to false. Otherwise, we just copy the signal from the previous candle. This block here is where trades are entered. 
we check if the current index is equal to the entry from the trade data frame. If the model is not none, meaning we've already trained it, we use predict proba to predict the probability of the two classes. Since we used a binary label, zero for losing trades and one for winning trades, we only need one of the probabilities. I chose the probability of this trade being a winner. That's why we have this index one here. We save this probability to the probability signal and add the predicted probability to the trades data frame. If the probability of the next trade is greater than 50%, we set signal to one. We could use a higher threshold than 50%, which would result in less trades taken, but generally a higher performance. Then set the take profit, stop loss, and time limit for the current trade. Finally, we increment the trade I index, and that's it for the walk forward code. Here's the performance of the trades that the model picked and all the trades with no filtering. The first two years were used for training, so it's flat here. The model appears to have done its job. It outperformed the underlying strategy. The trades from the underlying strategy were in the market 30% of the time, while the model's chosen trades were in the market 20% of the time. The model boosted the win rate slightly and more than doubled the average trade. The improved strategy did struggle in late 2021 and early 2022, but here's the same chart with a buy and hold plotted as well. I also cut off the first two years that were used for training. Bitcoin during that period was getting wrecked and the strategy is long only, so I think the strategy struggling during that period is forgivable. By utilizing meta labeling, we have turned a pretty lackluster strategy into a decent strategy. When the model's predicted probability of a profitable trade is less than 50%, the average return is negative. A short trade strategy could be considered when the model predicts a false breakout. If we adjust the probability thresholds to 55% and 45%, it improves the average trades even further. There's quite a bit more to experiment and improve on here, but my goal with this video was to show the trendline breakout strategy and a simple example of meta labeling. A meta labeling setup has a lot of moving parts and it is difficult to explain everything in detail without too much rambling, so I hope this video was still interesting or informative. Anyways, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching.